we've got this one maybe be more pleasant this is jack pronouns he him calling in from crispy anus uh <laughs> there might be a higher power but we don't have the technology to prove it let's talk about it jack you're on the line with forest and blitz you're our second to last caller jack I, with, from the crispy I, anus can you hear me yes Um, yeah, so basically my point is that there's a higher power, but we don't have the technology to prove it. And to expand upon that, if religion is real, right, then God is essentially limiting our I'm sorry, Jack. On- I'm- yeah. Jack, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cut you off. I, there's nothing wrong with what you're saying. I just want to point out that Imperius just sent a super chat to say uh, that that I win because I made you cry by talking about autism. Dude, you just did the thing that I said you were going to do, and you paid me $2 to do it. I'm going to take Amazing. your $2, buy myself a cup of tea, and laugh at what a petulant little child you are. You, should, you literally you did donate. the thing I said you were going to do. <laughs> Thank you for donating to the Atheist Cause, Imperius. We're going to make should, more great content with you your should, money. You should donate it to the FFR, FFRF. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my glob. Jack, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Please continue with what you're, what you're talking about. Um, um, sorry. Let me, let me start again. Um, yeah, start start from the scratch. I'm I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. That that was just too funny to let it go. <laughs> no, it's good, dude. Like listening and sitting through that, I was like ready to vomit. Like, bro. <laughs> <sighs> They're so, a soft bunch, aren't they? Uh, let me try and gather my thoughts. Um, yeah. Okay, so if. There's basically, there's a higher power that exists, but we don't have the technology to prove it yet. If reality, or not reality, if religion is true, at least like through the Christian standpoint, right? God is supposed to come back at some time, and he is limiting our technology that we stick to the earth. If aliens exist, and God exists, then aliens have to have some sort of religion that matches one of our religion you know it's funny that is actually that that last part the second you know thing you gave us there is actually one of the reasons why my wife uh deconstructed from her christianity uh because as soon as she learned how big the universe is she was like okay well there's got to be other life out there and they must all have a jesus then that doesn't make any sense and just it fell apart (laughs) yeah like they either have to have tie-ins to like either buddha jesus uh muhammad all any of those right Mm -hmm. or it could be more like um what is it like the greek essentially a pantheon yeah but it sounds yeah. like all of this started with the with the with the word if. I'm I'm curious to know you're calling in as a theist. Is this something that you believe or is this something you're wanting to entertain? Like what's the purpose of the call? I was wondering if basically we could talk about it of like this is my explanation that yes, there is there is probably a higher being at power, but we don't know. Mm-hmm. That, that could also come like say, there's go ahead. How can you say probably then if we don't have evidence for it? Because we don't because you can still have supernatural and paranormal activity and stuff that cannot be explained. And so still God have of the gaps that can explain our reality. What I'm sorry. It just sounds like you're saying that because there is stuff that is unexplained, God must be real. Possibly. So, I would ask you... And probably are different. Yeah, that's the thing. I I would ask you the same question that we've asked a couple other callers. 
how do you tell the difference between something that is outside of reality that has no evidence for it that you can't explain that you can't detect with technology and something that doesn't exist how does it what's to say it doesn't exist then or what's to say it does well, exist, doesn't exist? yeah there's there's the, i'm asking how do you tell the difference that, that that's what i'm saying we don't have the technology it's there could be but we don't know could be I'm, is not sorry, the same as I'm probably being stupid. so look okay there's there's this there's this thing that um theists do quite frequently um and that is conflate possibility with probability and so the way that we, the way that we analyze the way that we do like the way that we think about things scientifically or one of the ways anyway is some through something called bayesian bayesian reasoning essentially you have a prior a prior probability or a prob prior probabilistic assessment of something being true like maybe you think maybe you have a uh, maybe you're trying to figure out if um if you'll if when you run a le red light uh you'll get hit you'll get into a car accident so before you do any experiments before you make any observations you'll have some sort of prior maybe you'll say the probability of me getting hit when i run a red light is one percent it's just a wild guess right then you go and you run experiments mm -hmm. you collect data make observations and then you adjust that guess and you can come to better and better assessments uh, as you collect more and more evidence you can adjust your priors so that it becomes more and more so that your uh your or you, you rather you don't adjust your priors you adjust the probability of your beliefs based off of the data that you have so when when somebody says that something is possible that could be anywhere from 0 0.0001 percent and 99 percent but when we say something is probable you know that might mean 51 percent or 95 percent or whatever it is and so but it seems like you're you're conflating this notion of something being possible maybe you know ghosts are real if it, maybe it's possible that ghosts are real versus it's probable that ghosts are real or it's it's possible that there's a supernatural being versus it's probable that there's a supernatural being i might even be willing to admit that there is some remote possibility of something being the case but you, in order to convince somebody to believe it you need to convince them that it's probable Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to bring up? Anything else that you want to say to that? Or, or does that answer your question? No, that, that answers my question. Um, but would you say, like, if, or aliens exist, right? Because we've seen the news there has been stuff that shows hey there could be life um i don't think that humans have that? been visited no no I, I i think it's considering the scale of the universe i think that it is like very very likely that life exists somewhere in the universe there are other planets with life on them i think that's really difficult to argue against just from a probabilistic standpoint right um but to say that we've been visited by them, that is now a huge jump in 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 faith and in probability no. that, that that isn't something that we need to take. That, that, that's not what I was asking. I was like, we have found lights. There was an article recently. We found lights on a really far distant planet. Aliens could possibly no, we didn't. exist, right? No. So so this is you're talking about. Kepler 18 or Kepler 2 18b I think um yeah there yeah so uh what was detected is the phosphorus compound I don't remember what it was um phosphine and so like I, I I don't think it was phosphine it was three syllables um but anyway whatever it was so essentially what happened is that they took a spectrum of a particular exoplanet and they found that even though the data was really noisy, it could be the case that there is a certain chemical element that's, or a, a sorry, a chemical or a, a compound rather that is in the atmosphere, which we don't know how it would form unless there's life there. Now, 
other other scholars have actually analyzed that same data and have come to the conclusion that actually the original analysis just wasn't good. Um, and that really, if you want to make a Bayesian analysis, you would come to the conclusion that it's not probable that there is this element there or this compound there. Um, but essentially, the, like the, as it stands right now, there might be life there. There might be life on Mars even. There might be life on Europa. Um, but we have no confirmatory evidence towards that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this is one of those things that, like, I, I've heard, I, I don't know which one this is. You said it was Kepler what, what? It's Kepler some, I want to say it's like Kepler 218B or, or something like that. So, I don't remember so what it is off the top I of my head. Up, I literally, I looked up life on Kepler and typed into Google. Maybe it's and I've 20. got life on Kepler 452B, 22B, 186F, 452B leaks, 442B, 62F, sure like... It's it's yeah, yeah so it's it's K two eighteen B that's what it was. K two was the one that was making the rounds recently. Yeah, yeah. So, but but like, mm -hmm. all I'm saying is that like, this is one of those things that like that I just typed in life on Kepler and I found thirty different kinds of things where people have been saying the same stuff. This I guess is the newest one. It's I got an article here from Astronomy Magazine from June of this year saying that some planetary scientists believe it's likely that K two eighteen B has liquid oceans which might increase the possibility of life um and they found carbon dioxide and methane on the spectrum those don't require life but like they're definitely helpful um so like i just i don't know uh th this sounds like one other thing the reason i said phosphine when you said some sort of phosphorus compound is because that, that was, was a big one a little while ago and, yeah venus yeah we found phosphine in the atmosphere and they're like this is a life thing and then in, like so many scientists were coming out and saying like, hey guys, that isn't necessarily the only answer. And also it might not even be there in the first place. Just calm the fuck down, right? Um, I think if this was actually something that was indicative of life in a serious way, dude, I have so many friends who are astronomers and astrophysicists and, and astrobiologists, they would be fucking, their tits would be aflame with excitement about this and they'd be all about it dude they'd be talking to me about it all day long and i i i don't think they would be able to keep a lid on this but that isn't the case uh so like the fact that this is something that like the people who study this stuff aren't freaking out about might be a good indication that you shouldn't be freaking out about it either right now gotcha all right jack well i appreciate you waiting for almost an hour to talk to us uh, if there's anything else we can do for you, we'll do it. But otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. I did have a biology question. All right, we'll do it quickly. What's your biology question? Uh, how would you describe instincts via biology? Uh, there's a couple of different models. the The way that I learned it, I'm not a behavioral biologist, but the way that I learned it was simply that um, there are different ways to learn things. Um, and you can be either better or worse at learning a specific kind of thing. It's not, you can't stretch that to say like some people are just naturally dumb or smart or whatever like that. That's not how it works. But like you can have a genetic predisposition to certain times, uh, types of like of a uh, uh, skill and learning and things like that um, in very limited ways. And so basically the, the, the genetic model uh, for instinctual behavior is that you're so you get better and better at learning this type of behavior that eventually you don't even notice that it's learned and it just becomes this thing that just is an adaptive thing um check out i'm pretty sure the book the extended phenotype was an old richard dawkins book i think they talk about that uh but again i'm not a behavioral biologist it's not really my area of expertise that's just the way that i would summarize and I'm sure that there is somebody out there who actually specializes in that area that is punching their monitor in my stupid face right now. But that's the way I would give it to you as just a uh, layman's summary. You said that was Extended Phenotypes by Richard Dawkins? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure this one right here. I'm 99% sure he talks about it in this one, but it's been a long fucking time since I looked at this book. Um, and also this book is pretty old. So there's probably some better stuff out there now. But like. This idea that like the extent, the concept of an extended phenotype is the idea that like the, the beaver is the, like the usual example of this. Um, the, it's, it is an instinctual behavior of the beaver to build a dam. 
And then when the beaver does that, the dam changes the landscape. There's now a, a lake here. There's now a different kind of flowing river in that direction. Things live and die and grow. New plants come up and down. Uh, new animals move in and out of the situation. Um, that changes the geography of the landscape over a long enough period of time. Um, and all of that is an extension of the beaver's DNA. Fundamentally, the entire changed landscape and ecology and evolution for thousands of years is an extension of the phenotype of the individual beaver. And that's fucking cool. And so you, my research applied that concept to humans um, a lot of ways. And like, that's, that was what I was all about. But like, it's uh that's a whole other conversation for another time and then we'd have to talk about isotopes and i would kill myself so i'm not gonna do that <laughs> anyway thank yeah, you so much um, for the questions jack i appreciate you thank you for letting me take up your time it was nice uh not no nice way it, it, it was nice having a discussion <laughs> it was wonderful on all sides have an awesome day bye-bye eric do you want to learn how to mongolian throat sing check that no you i don't. try no, keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> Don't hear it. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching that clip. Patreon.com slash call the line is where you could support us. And maybe you could subscribe and like the video because it was it was a killer video. Or maybe it wasn't. Was it was it a forest video? If this was a forest video, you don't have to click like. If it was an Eric video, go ahead and click dislike.